So if we come back to here, okay, there we go. So you should be seeing the screen any second now. Good lucks, have funds uh, being thrown around. Uh, so if we start off, uh, hopefully you'll see this in a few seconds. Uh, we look at Jordan's hand, it's really rough. It's Well, it's got a Bajuka Bog and it's got a Swamp. It's got the two lands along with Sign and Bloods. Bajuka it's keepable. Bog is a, a little better later in the game. You, oh, both players kept their hand. All right. All right, so we'll keep and go right into the game. Uh, throwing down a quick bone splitter is kind of interesting. I'm surprised he didn't throw the uh, play the ponder first, um, but I guess he's really confident in his hand. Man, well, these players got, are going quick. He doesn't really need a ponder, right? He has a plan. If he can play the cloud of fairies, he can equip the bone splitter right away. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know if he wants to here. It's uh, it seems yeah he's gonna go second cloud of fairies, of course. Now, uh, now the thing is, is that he does run into the issue of there's the card that's um, now now he can now he can do the ponder and equip the bone splitter. I think without losing any tempo. Yeah. He, he looks like he's not going to... Oh, that was a piracy charm that we saw through the ponder real quick, and then it, uh, I don't know what else was up there. So, unfortunately, we're not going to see what he gets to ponder up, up top, but he did put a Delver on top, and he's gonna looks like he's going to play that out. Although that Kumbaj Witch is, <laughs> is going to be re uh, a real issue for uh, Robert in a few well, seconds. Well, the interesting thing here is that, uh, you know, Kumbaj Witch is a lot, a lot worse if Robert can flip this Delver here. Uh, it's a lot worse, but it's still going to take out those two Cloud of Fairies really quick. Although, um, Robert uh, Eldrazi Lackey, we should be calling him that since that's his name, um, might just be going to try and put that uh, Ninja of the Deep Hours in real quick. Oh, it looks like he's thinking about snapping the Kumbaj Witches right away. Which would really put Jordan on a bad tempo streak. And what is he doing over there? <laughs> um, Stop that nonsense. All right, we might have to go talk to our partner <laughs> and uh, <laughs> right. tell him how ridiculous. So he's, um, he's yep. Waiting. So so right now, um, Robert's probably just going to go and attack with his uh, flyers. It looks like since he's not equipping the bone splitter, he's definitely going to put in the ninja of the deep hours. Well, that that sort of turns off snap, but I think drawing the card is too good here. What are you doing over? Yeah, there? one second. We're going to have to go talk to our partner. So is that that's uh, that's Robert, right? That's uh, no, that's Jordan's. That's doing that. Yeah. Alright, we've had a word with him. Yes. Issue should be resolved. Um, so, oh, he put the, okay, so now we're going to see this Kumbach, which probably hit the, uh, the Cloud of Fairies that's still alive. That'll set him up really well for a Victim of Night on either the Apparition or the uh, Ninja of the Deep Hours. And so, I don't know, I think he might wait. Which is a little concerning because that opens up the line of Andrade Lackey using the snap to save his own creature. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Okay, so no, he's just gonna go ahead. Yeah, he's, he he sees that the the coast is clear. He's just gonna go ahead and get rid of that cloud of fairies. Yep. Definitely, what you want to do in the situation here. And if we look at it, you'll see that um, Sixsmith has a lot of uh, edict effects. Oh. And he also had a kill spell, but he's got two. He's got a Chainer's Edict and a Geth's Verdict in hand. Both of them will make a Eli, Eldrazi Lackey sacrifice a creature, and that'll be a kind of a tempo uh, burner. Uh, not necessarily. He's gonna he's gonna go back out with. He's gonna have two Cloud of Fairies again. That's true. At the end of this turn, so. But he's also has the potential to hit for five right here, which is which will put Sixsmith down at eight in a really worrisome position. I don't know. He has so he has his land. So he's a little unfortunate on lands, but uh. Yeah. He's got the Grey Merchant, so if he can stabilize a little bit, Kumbaj Witches adds double black to his devotion, so that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to talk. <laughs> we're gonna ha it looks like we're going to have to talk to players about a few things that we're learning <laughs> right now. Um, glad to see we got a few people in the chat on uh, Twitch. Um, so, yeah, so it looks like he's playing out playing out both his Cloud of Fairy. He's going to untap. Uh, he m looks like he's considering snapping the uh, Kumbaj Witch right at the end of turn, uh, which would put... Smith, six minutes in a rough spot if he wants to either replay the witch or um, play a verdict effect. So it looks like he did snap, um, but uh, but uh, six minutes draw, drew that swamp. Now, Crip Rats is another option here. Well, no, it's not really because it'll hit hurt him as well. Indeed, misclicks for days. I don't know where the misclicks were. Oh, he didn't untap his lands with a cloud of fairies. Oops. Well, you know, or with the uh, snap, that's what I meant. 
So he's wishing he could victim that because now his his two guess verdicts are a lot worse since they'll just hit a couple cloud of fairies or his two verdicts. Yeah, he has to, he has to edict here because he's, there's, there's just too much damage coming in. Yeah. Oh, he could also I could chitter in rats, but that's not no. The no, that's not even good that's doing anything for him. He's just killing. He's still dead in two no, turns. No, chitter rats actually. I mean, he just gush in response, but get two cards, put a land away. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, it looks like Edict is going to be the choice. So, make him sacrifice one of the Cloud of Fairies. He's hoping he can get through the, uh, the list. But that might actually be it right there. Yeah, Let's see, that'll six, seven damage, yep. So, um, if Eldrazi Lackey sees the play here, he'll attack in. Uh, can Piracy Charm, the one, the card we were talking about earlier for that last, uh, few points of damage to... Now, this is a spot where if... If Sixsmith had a disfigure here, that would be an, an incredible blowout. Yeah, but so that was game one. So we're going to go ahead and go off this. We're going to go to um, what potential sideboard cards are coming in. Well, we know for sure these four these four duresses Duress are going to be coming in. Sure. Um, disfigure, get, disfigure kills every single card of this matchup. I would be shocked if Disfigure didn't come in. Yeah, that's a good point. Disfigure is probably going to be coming in, along with poten probably that last Crip Rats. Um, being able to wipe the board when he's got all those clouds of fairies and the different fairies uh, out can be really useful. Um, the big thing is it looks like um, Six Minutes just started with a really bad hand early on. He kept two lands uh, he just didn't see anymore, and he didn't really have that many turns to see anymore. He missed one land drop, and that's all it took. Yeah. The early Delver that got flipped just beat him in, uh, beat him in too quick. There wasn't a whole lot he could do about it. Maybe, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the edicts might be less good here, especially with all the disfigures and duress. Yeah. Well, he might pull the... Um, he might pull a couple of the edict effects for the two disfigures and yeah, and the duress, like he just said. Um, now, unearth also seems a little slow here. Uh, I do like I like you know. There's a lot of value to be had from unearthing like you know a rage or a rats or something. But your opponent's yeah. not playing a lot of removal. There are the four counter spells in the main, so I don't know. I like pulling out, taking out the unearths, maybe. A couple mm -hmm. of edicts here and there, and putting in the, the disfigures and the duress. All right, let's look at Robert's side real quick. So Robert's got uh, two boomerangs, probably not going to do a whole lot. Two coral nets, which uh, tap down creatures. Uh, Curse of chains. One of them makes some tap down creatures. One of them's very useless in this. Two dispels, which might come in. He, uh, he does target what? Just the victim of nine. I well, and the edicts and the disfigures, it, but just instance, right? Dispel. Just instance. Okay, so that's I don't think dispel is good enough here. Okay, well he's got the two stormbound guys, which are probably going to come in. Yeah, those are definitely really good because it's really useful against the mono black that's trying to kill all his creatures. Well, I'll just uh, let you kill my creatures and then I'll get a three three back instead. Yeah. So um, we got we got those. The echoing truth is definitely not going to come in. So not a whole lot of uh, sideboarding here on Robert's side. Um, let's go ahead and check to make sure that we're not going into the next game yet. Nope, we still we got... We can oh, it. we can see some sideboard, actually. Well, we can see one sideboard. Um, so we'll see. Yep, like we said, he pulled in those two dis uh, two disfigures. Dude, duress. I'm a little surprised by that, actually. I think the unearths are a little subpar here. I would probably bring them in over the dis over or bring the duress over the unearth, but I can, I can see it both ways. Here, maybe be able to see... Oh yeah, we can. So yeah, like we said, brought on the two Stormbound guys. Pulled out the uh, yeah, pulled out the piracy charm, yeah, or did he have two? No, he had yeah, just the one. Uh, didn't bring in the coordinates. Pulled out the three snaps, which is uh, interesting, but probably the right call. There's not a whole lot that he wants to snap, uh, especially if he's expecting Lonely on a Specter. And, uh, and well, he really doesn't want to like cards that have a crazy effects when they come into play. You know, he doesn't want to be in a position where he's snapping a Gary or he's snapping uh, yep. any number of things. And it looks like we're going on to our next game, so let's go ahead and set this up real quick. Uh, hope that everything goes through, and then we'll uh, get to watch this next game. Uh, see if Six, Six Minutes has a better start. So, quick look at the two hands. Oh, Robert. Okay, I'm gonna have to yell at Robert because he hasn't doesn't have his graveyard out, so he can't see. But that is an island on the far left uh, in uh, Eldrazi Lockie's hand. Another hand with two swamps in it. Is it a keep this time? I think see, he needs to mulligan his hand. He needs. Interestingly enough, his opponent also has kind of a slow hand, so this is interesting. Yeah. Mulligan decisions on both sides. I can see him keeping it. He's got. Two he's two got blood. sign of blood, so he can't draw into stuff. He's he's having a tough decision there too. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot besides the. He does have the Crip Rats, which is really useful in this matchup think, because it clears out the board. I think it's risky, but I think he can keep. Okay, so he decided to mulligan. It's probably the right probably the right call in the long run. Uh, keeps the two Kumbaj witches, and it looks like Robert kept with two counter spells and three lands and a uh, spell starter sprite, which with only on one would be useful against a duress, but not a whole lot else. 
Yeah, the Ninja of the Deep Powers is good, except so this is huge. it's very getting, expensive. Getting this Witches out before Robert gets anything out is pretty significant. Yep. Also, an interesting interaction is that if Spellstutter Sprite's the only fairy out and Robert and he kills it, it won't counter anything. Yeah. So, so we very well may see that interaction uh, this game. Maybe not. Maybe or not the card. But yeah. No, no, no. You're right. If he if he plays a fairy. Um, Jordan can wait for the fairy to come in. Just saw a counter spell there. Um, Sixsmith can wait for the fairy to come in, use the Kumbaj Witch to kill it, and then when it uh, when the trigger counts how many fairies there are, the count is zero. Yeah. So then uh, it won't counter it. Uh, so looks like Robert just drew into a Spire Golem, which is going to be really useful next turn. Uh, it'll only cost two to cast. And um, let's see. Just the pinging both players. All right, that'll... Yeah, I mean, he's getting damage on the board. He's getting damage in. Although, if we look in um, six minutes' hands, he's got two Guess Verdicts. That's going to be really rough. Oh, and then another Kumbaj Witch. Um, which, as a note, two Kumbaj Witches can take out a Delver. Yeah, it can. But uh, I, I, I find it... I don't think that this one is going to resolve. It seems a little unlikely. Yeah, well, I mean, in, unless he's got more worrisome things to be countering. Because um, he does have one hard counter left in his hand. He's already used one, and... And this deck is, you know, obviously only runs four <laughs> four hard counters. Um, so we'll see if it goes through. Looks like he's thinking about it. Uh... Yeah, it's a tough decision because he can count. If he doesn't counter it here, then he's not going to be able to edit, play any of his fairies for the rest of the game. Even his uh, Ninja of the Deep right, Powers isn't that useful. Like counter spell is coming out. All right. Yeah, it just this wasn't. Is, this is pretty good for Jordan because now he doesn't have the, the lands just yet, but the path is clear for that Gary. Yeah, he's cleared out two of the counter spells. And there's another... Spell starter sprite in Robert's hand, and I don't know what he's doing that I can't that we can't see the rest of his hand. This looks like three spell spell starter sprites and a ninja of the deep hour is what it looks like is in Robert's hand. Yeah, he might be shifting some things over. Oh, okay, he played out the last land in the spell. Okay, so yeah. since his graveyard isn't up, uh, some of the sizing's a bit messed up, and I don't want to change a whole lot. So this right guess here. verdict is going to be a a very good hit. Uh, <laughs> he's going to wait for the up uh, for Robert's upkeep so to go ahead and put thing that here in. Is that if he waits till Robert's upkeep. It could well he can he can kill other sprite so mm -hmm. yeah this guest verdict is pretty good now Robert's considering snapping it yep there he's he figures well I'm gonna have to start playing out these uh, fairies at oh, some point okay and he's gonna go ahead and just do it now that's fine this yeah is probably a good eh, time to it's do kind it. of irrelevant really because he could unless he's well this way Robert can Robert get two Robert uh, can double, fairies in Robert could double sprite next turn. Yep, which also leaves room for his Ninja of the Deep Hours, which is very important. And there's a Gush, which is going to be really useful for Robert. He was running out of useful cards. Uh, this Gush is going to get him back into the game. He's got well, four he, islands. Mind, he's he's going to draw cards off this Ninja of the Deep Hours right now. Right. But having having four islands is a bit more than Mono Blue really needs. It's kind of <laughs> yeah. kind of excessive. They're normally fine with you know two or three lands for the whole game. Uh, so he's going in. Let's see. It's going to... Yeah, he's just not going to let it move to the... Uh, Block step. He's gonna go ahead and kill it now. I don't. I like this a lot actually because, I mean, especially because well, we can we can see that he has ways to get that spell third sprite back in his hand. Mm -hmm. And so getting just getting rid of that in position where he can't get it back to his hand, can't get that ninjutsu off it. That's just it's this, very good value. Work out very well for him. Now the other interesting option is he can just hard cast this ninja. And that looks like that might be what he's doing. Oh no, never mind. He changed his mind. All well, right. yeah, that'll be that'll be really awkward. Ooh, and a disfigure. <laughs> Jordan's getting all the control that he needs in this matchup. Unfortunately, he doesn't hasn't gotten that last land, so he's not dealing a whole lot of damage. Um, he's just got a lot of control at this point. Um, he's looking to move on a little more. This might be a time for Robert to gush as well. Um, I could definitely see it happening. Hit another one of those land drops would be really useful. Oh, he's just gonna play both spell starter sprites. Wow, this is gonna be really bad when he gets when the one of them gets disfigured. Yeah, he has to make sure that he has, Jordan has to make sure to let this one resolve first. Don't don't do it. <laughs> he's gonna he, he, he has to let it resolve. If he doesn't let it resolve, it's, it's gonna it's gonna counter. He's gonna no, it won't get countered like, because it would have to be yeah. It's right. going in first before just the other one. Silly. Oh, that's fine. So yeah, he's he's. <laughs> Taking care of that real quick, and then once the next spell starter comes in, this Kumbaj Witch is going to take care of it. Unless he just wants to guess verdict it, but... Uh, ooh! Frostburn Weirds. Here's, and here's where Frostburn Weirds is a really good card. Um, so remember how we've been talking about, you know, all of Robert's small creatures that are going to run into problems? Well, this Frostburn Weirds really is relatively cheap. You know, at only two mana for a 1-4. That's, uh, that's out of Disfigure range. It's out of Kumbaj Witch range. Unfortunately for him, it's not out of Guest Verdict range. That's very <laughs> true. So, uh, yeah, this is going to happen at the end of turn. We're going to see that in a few seconds, which uh, uh, is going to make Robert a very, very sad person. Um, 
Yeah. So so this is gonna get this is gonna get guest verdict away almost certainly unless he wants to, unless he wants to wait till his turn. But then if he draws a land that uh, puts him out of range for the Gary. Uh, to play the Gary, so I can't imagine him not doing this. <laughs> Although here. he is, he does, is holding up counterspell magic, so Jordan could think he has one of his uh, two counterspells that are still around. Oh wow! Okay, so we guess verdict and then Gushton responds. Oh, we're, we got a difference in the stream times. That's what this looks so silly. So uh, yep, he's gonna sack that. He was looking for uh, he was looking for that counterspell I was just mentioning. He found a land and a delver. Unfortunately, neither of those are gonna do it. But that sign of blood for six myth is gonna be really helpful. Put him a little bit more on the car uh, back into the game with card advantage. And is he gonna sign a blood again? Just go yeah, for he's it. Yeah, go for it. He, he, he might if he gets another. I think he does it here. If he gets another land, that's what he wants to see. The first one resolves, so mm -hmm. he's gonna resolve too probably. Yep. Oh, and didn't hit a land on either of them. But there's another sign of blood <laughs> if he wants to. Um, we're probably going to start seeing the Kumbaj, which actually... No, no okay. No, no. There's, there's too many one-drops that just fly in. Oh, there's that counterspell Robert was looking for, just a turn too late. <laughs> so uh, that's going to go That's gonna go in real quick, and then we'll probably... No, he didn't land the... I guess there's no point in landing the Delver yeah. right now. It's just going to get uh, killed by a Kumbaj, which... This, this is going to get... There we go, so... This is going to get countered immediately. I cannot imagine Jordan just playing this into Robert drawing him. And, yeah, and he does not. Well, yeah, although he could, you know, he didn't counter either the sign of blood's last turn. Maybe he thought he didn't have a counter spell. Oh, there's a chittering rat, so that's the play right there. That'll draw out that counter really well. Because that's going if to, if, because if it doesn't get countered, that's going to put Robert in a really sticky situation where he's just drawing a land next turn. Yeah. And that's not useful at all. So. Still post combat. No, no rats. Interesting. So he's going to hold up both the disfigures. Unless he misclicked there. <laughs> but he's going to hold up both the disfigures. And, um,. Kind of wait for Robert. Say tell Ro say to Robert, you know, hey, let's see what you got. Uh, Robert drew a brainstorm. Is he gonna use it right now? Um, he might be looking. It's a, it's actually a brainstorm's a good spot uh, in a good spot, especially if his he thought his opponent had to rest. I think he's gonna wait for uh, wait for Jordan to do something here. Yep. And there's another chittering rats. I think Jordan's like, all right, well, I gotta play it out now. Yeah. I got two of them because these chittering rats will also be helping uh, Gary with the with that devotion trigger. Um, let's see if there's a counter spell up or a brainstorm of any kind. See, because I don't think uh, there's a way for Robert to shuffle his library anyway. Um, okay, so we're back to Robert's turn. He just passed through. Sorry, we've got we've got some serious delay here because we just saw Robert play an island, which means no, he no, he put it back on top of the chittering rat. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm not even paying attention. That's what it, that makes a lot more sense than uh, having like. 30 seconds delay. Yeah, Dan Peel, you'd keep that two with sign and blood. I would have too. I would have kept that two with sign and blood. Yeah. Uh, it's a, but it's risky, you know? Yeah, he could, he could have just, I mean, like last game, just not run into any of the lands he needed. Uh, let's see. So he's got two Delvers right now. Yeah, um, do a whole lot, you know? Yeah, when there's a <laughs> out, they're just kind of sitting there. Um, he can run. If I want, oh, it looks like, oh, I see. So Jordan's right now playing up. Uh, he's putting a like, counterspell on top. That's a really that's a bold move, uh, unless he's really worried about it being. I think he's worried uh, about it being. Ta oh, he's gonna draw it again. That's what's happening. Well, he's gonna draw it again, but you know, that's a count. That's one more counterspell you don't have in your hand. This is this is this is really interesting right here. So he's gonna play the Delver. Oh, because Jordan did end up attacking with the Kumbaj Witch because he, he needs to get the damage in. He wants to flip these Delvers here. The counterspell is gonna flip the Delver. Although Jordan. <laughs> Quickly highlights over the Crypt Rats, showing that uh, that might not go off as well as he'd hoped. I think the right call is to... Ooh, or he could just disfigure both of them. Or one of them, and then Kumbaj with the other the one. I Crypt Rats play, because Crypt Rats just takes both of them out. Yeah. He the, just trades Crypt Rats. But then he's also trading his Chittering Rats, which no, is no, a... Not. No, he's not. He can use Crypt Rats for one. Oh, that's right. If he Crypt Rats for one right now, and then uh, that'll take out his the Crypt Rats. Then that's a complete beating if he Crypt Rats for one. Yep. Uh... Good call, uh, attacking first so that uh, doesn't get any value out of this. Yep, go ahead and, and play that Crypt Rats. And Robert, as we said before, put that counter spell on top of his deck, which, uh, boy, I bet he was wishing he had right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the, the thing is, you know, he didn't really have a choice here. He needed those Delawares to flip, and... Oh, yeah, yeah, so he needed... So Jordan here is going to do the smart thing. He's going to wait to for... see what was To see what was on top before... But, but he doesn't have a chance, you know? He If he, if he sees what's on top... Then oh, then they both. It'll go ahead. One of them will go ahead and flip. Mm -hmm. So he's just gonna kill him now. Um, and, and then I, I assume that Robert is not going to show uh, the counterspell on top of his deck. Yeah, that seems a little unlikely. But yeah. uh, 
Another note is that since he does have that counter spell now, that makes that Gary really awkward. Is that a last ninja of the deep hours that he's just going to hard cast? So yep. if he casts it, this, this play is great, right? Because now he can just triggering rats and just lock out whatever was in his hand. And end of turn, end turn disfigure, this is obviously a of course. Straight, straightforward play. So chittering rats to put whatever was on top of his deck. That's assuming he gets another land because he can't play. Well, actually, he, he needs two more lands. He can't play them both anyway. But yeah, so he can. Well, he can chittering rats and just keep attacking. So he's got to deal what three damage a turn. So that gets him in for at least two turns. There's <laughs> another chittering rats. Yeah, I play it. Yeah, just keep playing those out. Just, not try and force the Gary. Not try and force just, the I issue mean, here. Eventually, at some point, that Gary's just gonna win in the game. So. Mm -hmm. So this is what the this is what the uh, mono black deck is all about: just controlling the board, uh, not letting your opponent get too many creatures out, and... not letting your opponent keep any cards in hand. And of course, obviously, you're going to counterspell this because you don't want your opponent to have a two-two red. It's functionally equivalent, you know. So, mm -hmm. so uh, and he gets to play. Oh, he's just going to play the other he's chittering rats. Go ahead and get damage on the just put some damage out on the board. Well, put some damage on the board, but more importantly, that m puts him in range that for like a, a Gary. Brain, that looks like a brainstorm. Oh, that was oh. a Stormbound Geist, which oh. isn't going to matter because we're going to drop a Gary right here. And that's going to win the game. And that'll deal not only 8 damage, no, put him at 1. <laughs> but unfortunately, it doesn't look like... Oh, yeah, and the Kumbach wish <laughs> for the last point. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. All righty, so that's our game two. Oh, and I... See, this is why I had a note. We need to uh, update these records real quick. So we've got... One and one. Uh, right one and one right now, close game. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to. Um, let's go over to the sideboard. I think let's let's uh, we'll see what people do here. I'm curious to see if there's any changes from game one. Uh, if we, we can go ahead and look at what they're doing. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. We can because we found that out from the other time. Um, oh, somebody. Okay, so he threw it right back, and then we go Robert, to Robert Grant hit it right back immediately. Yeah, he knows he had the bit. He knows he had the better setup. He just had a he had a slow start, and he didn't get those thing uh, those creatures out that he needed. So instead, we're gonna look at. Uh, Jordan, if he's decided to do any sideboard, doesn't look like he's looking for any <laughs> sideboards right now. He's considering pulling out those victims and knights, I think they're just too good. No, it looks like he's just going to run it back too. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, I wonder if the death denied wouldn't be terrible to get back those creatures that have been countered. It's interesting against counter spells. Uh, it's a little weak itself to counter spell, so. Yeah, and it all and it's also I, pretty see, right slow. Here, okay, this is what I like. I really like I really like these duresses coming in. Okay, so he's pulling the duresses in. Let's see what he pulls out for him though, because it's it's a tough decision. So he's pulling yeah pulling those aside. He might. I do like the idea of pulling aside pulling out the um the verdicts because he does have a lot of verdicts. How many is he running? Two chainers edict and four gets verdict. That's. Six verdict effects in and of itself. Well, keep in mind that if, if pulling, pulling, out, putting in duresses and pulling out the edicts makes it a lot. You know, you can't, you can't interact with these creatures as much. So the duress can't hit the creatures. But he still has the victims and knights and the oblates and the um, three kumbaj witches to interact with the creatures along with the four crypt rats since he cited one of those in. I like Ubli. Ubliet is nice for Gary. I think mm -hmm. it's I think it's a little weaker in terms of the removal. I do think it's I think it's a very cheeky a lot of times. It's not doing a whole lot. Um and it's a three drop, you know. I think I think I like cutting two obliettes here. Uh I don't even know what else to cut. Maybe. I I would probably cut the two obliettes and two of the guess guess verdict. That would leave you with four verdict effects still, two uh victim of knights to well, take care of some creatures. I'd cut the edicts, the chainer's edict may, maybe, uh the main, you know, is obviously irrelevant in this deck. Mm -hmm. The flashback, I think, is also pretty much irrelevant. I can't imagine mm -hmm. him trying to flash. Um, although it's going to take him a while to flash those two. Although back. to be fair, this deck wants to go late. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could theoretically get to it, and it would be good value. But he's not. He's looking for it the first the first time he casts it, and then the second time is is nice, but uh, not to be not. Well, maybe he might not keep the rest of the after all. Let's see. Let's see let's yeah, see. he's having a tough time figuring out what he wants to cut, and he's only got about thirty seconds left to make this decision. Oh man, so let's see. I mean, because you're gonna keep your ragers, you're gonna I mean, keep your like, chittering rats, just because they're they're great value. The, uh, the duress is just oh okay. Okay, so I didn't even realize he had pulled in two of the wrench mines, so he's gonna take those out no, no, and he took out the edicts. The way the thing was, looks a little weird. So yeah, he pulled out two oblivions and two. Uh, two of the chainers edicts, like we were talking about. Okay, yeah, I like this. I like so this. let's go ahead and get back to our games real quick. He has a little bit of a harder Pull time. Pull these in, that, and we've got it 1-1. One, one. This is our last uh, last game of this match. Both players look like they've got plenty of time. Jordan with a stuck with a, land, a handful of lands. One Bajuka Bog, two Baron Moors. Well, we can cycle those Baron Moors right away. I'm actually okay with this hand. 
It's not spectacular, but he doesn't have a turn one play. I think turn one play, he can just drop a swamp and just immediately cycle a Baron more. Yeah. So looking at Robert's hand, it looks like he's only got one land, but he's got a ponder, a brainstorm, two ponders, and a brainstorm, uh, which sets him pretty up, pretty Daze. sets him up Daze really good for his hands. And he's got a daze, which would be. Uh, which could really throw Jordan off. Man, man, I did not know he had those dazes. That's that's crazy. <laughs> this this turn one days is really gonna. Yeah. He's not gonna play anything. So. No, I mean, in case in case uh, anybody didn't know, days uh, on MTGO is approximately how much was it? It's uh, it's about twenty to thirty dollars. Last I checked, yeah, it's, it's, or twenty it's, to thirty ticks. It's like twenty ticks. Yeah. Uh, oh well, you're welcome, Jimmy Colorado. Uh, yeah, thanks for checking out the stream. Really yeah. appreciate it. Um, so right now we're gonna go right into a cloud of fairies. All right, you Unsurprising there, uh, six myth with no real responses. He's just uh, he's kind of stuck. And, and this this is the classic start that Mono Blue wants to see. You know, you want to <laughs> throw a handful of cloud of fairies on the table. You know, maybe play a bone splitter, which looks like he's gonna do. Mm -hmm. And again, we look at we see what we saw that first game where that guess verdict is immediately a lot less useful. So uh, he's gonna go ahead and equip that bone splitter. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, six myth gonna cycle that other Baron more. Just right now. I mean, there's no need to wait for it. You know, mm -hmm. just whatever. Just do it. And uh, so we see he's gotten... Oh boy, he's just, he is flooding out here. And this Kumbud Witch is not going to do a whole lot. Yeah, especially when it gets dazed right here. <laughs> yep. And uh, I wish we could see Six Myths face right now when this uh, when this play happened. <laughs> and that's why you run Daze. And that's why, you're, and that's why Daze is such a good card and is uh, the, uh, the primo spot for those <laughs> expensive mono blue decks. <laughs> So uh, we're getting an attack. We could see the ninja get flashed in here. I would be, I'd be shocked to not to see the ninja not come in. The cloud of fairy is so much better in the hand than it is on the board. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. The other thing though is that now you don't have that uh, you don't have that fake for counterspell magic at least. You know, before you can hold up those two uh, you can hold up those two islands and fake that you've got counterspell. Well, sometime, he, still has, but... he has days. We know he, we know he has days in the deck, right? And six months. That's also, true. Also knows, uh, knows that he has days, so you know. <laughs> He could be running that issue too, so he's going to draw his two cards. Sidian Blood is really, really rough here. You're, you're taking two damage to draw those cards. So that puts him. So this hit's going to take him down to eight, uh, and then we're going to see. And oh, and uh, Eldrazi Lackey pulled up a counter spell. So this is a good time for him to. Oh, and then he got the island too. So we're going to see a Delver come come down, followed by a, uh, by holding counter spell magic up next turn. Uh, this could be it right here if that Delver gets flipped next turn. Uh, I, think it, I think this is it regardless. Uh, there's another Cloud of Fairies in the hand that's coming out. Yeah, that's right. He's going to recast that Cloud of Fairies. Why not? Um, I mean, you run the risk of Sixsmith having a Duress, but or the Crypt Rats, but, but the yeah, Crypt Rats is only going to hit for one. Oh, there's the Crypt Rats we just talked about. So but, that would hit the Delver, both the Cloud of Fairies, and that would leave Jordan with just the Ninja of the D-Powers. Uh, which I think is the right call. I don't think there's much else he can do. Rats is not going to resolve. Yep, it's going to get countered immediately, <laughs> and I think that's the game. Well, that's assuming that this Delver flips, right? Well, he can Six flip. Myth. No, oh, he's just going to matter. He can force the flip. Yeah, he's got to ponder in his hand. And he's got to brainstorm. So, so that's game. Yep. All right, so there we go. That is our first match 